1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we'll begin reading verse number 13. The Bible says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, you believe that? Amen. Oh yeah, I believe that, huh? Even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless your holy name. We thank you, Lord, for the report of the good jail services this morning. Thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Thank you for the good singing, the good fellowship time. God, thank you for being a good God. Uh, Lord, we're thankful we have your word. We have the truth this morning. And God, we're certainly thankful that we can assemble in this nice facility and worship you and spirit in the truth. Uh, thank you for the blessings of the day. Thank you that daily you load us with benefits. Uh, and Father, we feel guilty asking anything, but we do ask that you'd put a hedge about this place uh, and we ask you to permeate this place with your presence. Uh, I pray, as Brother Adrian's already prayed, that you'd manifest yourself to every heart. Uh, Father, I pray if there be any amongst us today who's lost without Christ, that today will be the day of their salvation. God, I pray for the children of God. God, I pray that you would more than edify them and encourage them. I pray that you would excite them for the things that may befall us even this very day. Lord, I believe that we're in these last days. I believe that we are going to be that generation uh, that sees you step out on the clouds uh, and call your church out of here. Uh, and Lord, your people ought to be the most excited people in the world because we're watching the Bible be fulfilled right before our eyes. Uh, yet, Lord, there's so many who are oppressed uh, there are so many that are facing so many problems uh, that, Lord, they do not look to Thee, the author and finisher of their faith. Today, I pray, God, You'd help them. You'd do something great for them. Uh, then, Lord, I pray You'd use this unworthy vessel. And, Lord, I pray You'd touch me. You know my heart. I want to give You my best this morning. And, Lord, You know what You put on my heart. Uh, and there's a whole lot to expound on here this morning. And, Lord, I realize every time I stand behind this sacred day desk uh, that if I stand in the energy of my own flesh, I'll be nothing uh, but a failure because you said without you, we can do nothing. And, Father, I pray today that, Lord, you'd help me. Uh, I realize the great apostle Paul wrote when he was weak, then was he strong. Uh, and, Father, I pray that you'd take the weakness of my throat, uh, and I pray that you'd help somebody and bless somebody today. Uh, Father, glorify your name's sake, and, Father, we'll bless you for it. For it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we do pray. Amen and amen. This is a wonderful chapter in the Bible. <clears throat> Can I say, but most people only fo focus on the end of the chapter. In this chapter, the Apostle Paul uh, expounds on the topic of sanctification, being set apart for the glory of God. He also expounds on sharing uh, and taking part in others. Uh, say, preacher, why do we have so many missionaries in? Because I want to be a part of their ministry. I want to take part in what they're doing for the glory of God. You realize that when we uh, help a missionary, uh, every soul that they win to God, uh, we also get credit for that. Everything they do for God, we also get credit for that. Uh, the Lord knows we can't go to Barbados. Uh, 
we can't go to St. Lucia, but we can help those that are there uh, to win people for Jesus Christ. Uh, and I'm kind of selfish that way. Uh, I want to have missionaries everywhere in the world. Uh, and I want to see people saved everywhere in the world. Uh, and I want to get credit for that. Uh, uh, God has given us our Jerusalem here in Florence, Kentucky. Uh, but we want to reach out to Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. Uh, and we do that through missions. Uh, and the Apostle Paul uh, is expounding in this chapter how they time and again had given to him uh, and told him not to quit. Just keep on doing it. Uh, and he also expounds on something that a lot of us have a problem with, me personally. He expounds on studying to be quiet. Yes, oh my. Sometimes we don't hear God because we're too busy doing the talking. And he didn't just say, be quiet. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He says, study to be quiet. Make it part of your routine so you can hear that still, small voice. A lot of great things in this chapter. Then we get down to the end of the chapter. Notice three things about this as a way of introduction. Notice uh, he, he expounds on resurrection hope. In verse 13, he says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. The Apostle Paul did not call them ignorant brethren. I know some ignorant brethren, and I'm not going to go into it right now. But can I say, he is saying, I don't want you to be ignorant. He's not calling them stupid, Brother Tommy. He is saying, I don't want you to be unlearned. I'm going to teach you something that you need to know. I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren, uh, uh, concerning them which are asleep. Now, that word asleep, he's talking about those that died in Christ. Can I say that the child of God, we don't die. We died out to sin. We got born again. We have eternal life. Uh, and when it comes time for us to cross over, we don't die. We just go to sleep and wake up in glory. Uh, and that's what he's talking about. Uh, what a blessing to have that hope uh, uh, that uh, our loved ones are not dead. When we lay them in the ground, that's just uh, the wardrobe that they used when they uh, walked on earth. Uh, but the soul uh, is already in glory. And he's uh, talking about that because he says that you sorrow not, uh, even as others which have no hope. Uh, there was a sect of the Sanhedrin Council uh, that believed that there was no resurrection of the dead, uh, that when people died, they died just like a dog, and that was the end of them. Uh, uh, but Paul's giving them hope, uh, said, no, if your uh, loved ones died in Jesus, uh, 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 they're just asleep. Uh, 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 they're over on the other side. You have no reason not to hope you'll see them again. Uh, we see resurrection hope. Uh, then he deals with redemption power. Look at verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus uh, will God bring with him. Uh, so we find that there is uh, redemption power. We find the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and if you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you've been saved. Uh, if your loved ones believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, they've been saved. Uh, and there's power power about that uh, because we've been raised in newness of life uh, Jesus said I come to give you life and life more abundantly uh, hey I received eternal life uh, I've told you and I've told you and I've told you if you ever hear in the paper uh, or hear that Doug Foster died uh, call him up and have him retract it uh, no I died to sin uh, third Saturday night of August 1974 uh, but I'm alive forevermore uh, because I received eternal life uh, uh, I promise you this the last breath I take in this world uh, the next breath I take in the glory world I'll be having the time of my life don't feel sorry for me huh? everything that I've read about everything that I've studied about everything that I've preached about for four decades will become reality and I'll have myself a spell I, I guarantee you uh, so we see redemption power power over the grave comes through Jesus Christ and then we he deals with the rapture now can I say the word rapture is not in the Bible he's dealing with the catching away of the saints he's dealing when Jesus takes his church out of here when God's people are raptured now notice that he said in verse number 14 
Even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Now look at verse number 15. For, we, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Uh, that we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them uh, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. This is the next great event in prophecy. This is the next thing that will transpire. And it's called the catching away of the saints when the Lord takes us out of here. There's coming a day when the father's going to look at the son and say, go get your bride. And the son's going to step out on the clouds and with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and the trump of God shall sound. Those that are dead in Christ, his souls he's bringing with them because their souls are already in heaven. And their bodies are going to raise from the grave and in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, that soul's going to be reunited with the body and given a glorified body. Yes, See, explain all that to me, preacher, I can't. Because i got a little finite mind. We're talking about God's business here. Uh, you say, what if uh, uh, they were buried at sea? That fish is going to spit them up. What if they were... Uh, 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 burnt and scattered. God will bring all them ashes back together. They, I, I, all I know is that's God's business. Amen. Matter of fact, some of them people been in the grave a long time. There ain't no flesh left there. They're just bones. But God's going to bring that body out of that yeah. grave. Yeah. He's going to reunite it with that soul and it's going to be changed into a glorified body. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Then we which are alive and remain, those of us that are still here on the earth, will not prevent them. They're going first. Then we which are alive and remain will be caught up. We'll be out of here. That's amazing, Brother Ray. The lost crowd isn't going to hear the trumpet. They're not going to hear the shout of the archangel. They might think something that's thunderous or something. But those that know God... We know his voice through the word of God. Yes, sir. We're going to hear his voice. Yeah. And I don't know what the shout's going to be, but I know over in Revelation chapter 4, John heard, come up hither. Yes, we may hear, come up hither. It don't matter what we hear. All I know is when he calls, I'm out of here. Huh? Yeah. We'll lay these old bodies down and we'll get a glorified body and we'll rise to meet him in the air. I don't have time to get into all the eschatology of this, but listen, a lot of people don't believe in the rapture of the church. They believe in a general uh, return of the Lord, and he is coming back to the earth. But this isn't his second coming. We rise to meet him in the air. His second coming is seven years after this. When he comes, and we'll come with him, and according to Revelation 19 and Zechariah 14, we're coming back with him on white horses. He's going to land on the Mount of Olives, split that mountain in two, and he's going to put an end to the battle that is going on in the Valley of Megiddo. We call it the Battle of Armageddon, and he will destroy them that are fighting against Israel. Yes, sir. Amen. You and I, we'll be out of here. We'll be with him. We'll go to the judgment seat of Christ. We'll don the wedding garment. We'll sit down at the marriage supper of the Lamb. We'll feast with the Lamb. And then we come back with him. What a time, friends. Amen. What a time. We see he deals with the rapture. The catching away. But then, I want you to focus on verse 18. This is where I'm going to preach from. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. This morning, we ought to be comforted to know we believe on Jesus when we die. That's not the end. That's just really the beginning. Yeah. Yes, sir. Amen. We ought to be comforted to know that he cares so much about us, he's going to fulfill his promise that he's coming back for us. Amen. He's not going to leave us here. 
We ought to be comforted to know that we're not going to be here during the great tribulation period, the time of Jacob's troubles. Amen. Now, there's some believe that the church is going out midway. There's only one problem. He promised that his church wouldn't see tribulation. Huh? We're not going through that. No, we'll suffer some per persecution, but we're not going through that tribulation period. Huh? The tribulation period is a time of purging of the Jews because he came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, hallelujah, that's you and I that are saved, Amen. to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Huh? We ought to be comforted to know we're not going through a tribulation period. We ought to be comforted to know that Christ took our tribulation on Calvary, that he was baptized in the wrath of God on Calvary. The Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. He became sin that you and I, uh, who knew, uh, 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 knew uh, 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 no righteousness could be made, the righteousness of God in him, he that knew no sin became sin for you and I. We ought to be thankful for what Jesus done for us. That ought to comfort us. It ought to comfort us to know that he could come any moment. He said, wherefore comfort one another with these words. Let me ask you a question. Why do you all look so miserable? How come when we get to talking about the Lord coming, some of you get a little nervous? Maybe you got your stakes driven too deep in this earth. Maybe. You want to spend one more night in the hog pen. Maybe you don't even know the Lord. I don't know. He said, wherefore comfort one another with these words. I want to preach for a few minutes this morning on words of comfort. Words of comfort. We ought to leave out this morning comforted. Uh, can I say the words are comfort the words these words are comforting because of the havoc we're facing Amen. too many people when they talk about going to heaven they only talk about going to heaven because they want to get out of their miserable life we ought to talk about going to heaven because we get to see Jesus Yes. But can I say we are living in tumultuous times. Amen. I am soon to be 61 years of age and I have never in my life ever seen going on in the world what is going on now. Yeah. I go back to JFK. I've seen some stuff. I remember when there were riots that were really based on racial tensions. I remember the civil rights time. I remember when they started segregating schools. I remember all those days. I remember seeing water fountains that said whites only. I've seen that. I've seen oil prices go through the roof, and, and I've seen where people couldn't buy gas except uh, whether or not their uh, uh, numbers on their cars were odd or even. You could only buy gas on certain days. I remember factories laying off people uh, and uh, uh, people waiting in line for hours to get a, a, an application to, to work at Wendy's. Uh, I remember times, uh, 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 my dear friends, when the uh, uh, prime lending rate went up to 15, which means uh, 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 the interest rates were nearing 30%, uh, and people couldn't buy homes because the interest on the homes was more than the home. Uh, 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 they couldn't buy cars. They couldn't buy anything uh, uh, because of how bad the economy was. Uh, I remember if you saw Mercedes Benz uh, that was something uh, that was something like you boys talk about seeing a Bugatti uh, I mean if you saw Mercedes Benz that was something now my neighborhood's got three or four of them sitting in there uh, 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 listen I'm telling you I remember when things were bad but I've never seen it as bad as right now we're living in total chaos this world has gone insane. I'm reminded what the psalmist said when the earth is out of course. Yeah. We're there. Yeah. I mean, people have lost their cotton-picking minds. Yeah. What amazes me is how many people don't see it. Yeah. 
Huh? Now, I know 2 Thessalonians talks about when the Antichrist appears that those that have heard the gospel and rejected it, God will bring strong delusion on them to where they'll be, believe a lie and be damned. And I used to think, man, that's going to be a whopper of a, of a lie. No. Shoot, people believe everything now. Uh, I've never seen so many Karens and sheep in all my life. Uh, listen, in our world, decency is disappearing. Could I say, I remember when sinners were decent. I remember when sinners would hold open a door for a lady. I remember when men wouldn't cuss in front of a lady. Now the women are worse than the men. I'm talking about, uh, I remember decency. I remember when people would wear clothes that was not uh, uh, sickening to look at them. I mean, there's some people you look at and think, what in the world? Uh, and there's some people you're trying to figure out whether they're a man or a woman. I've learned they don't know if they're a man or a woman. I mean, we're living in a world uh, that has lost all scope of decency. It's filtered in our churches. Brother Adrian been preaching on that. Can I say debauchery is becoming mainstream? They'll burn down cities. They'll tear down statues. They'll spit on the flag and burn the flag. And not only here in America, across the world. Amen. Debauchery is going on. It's mainstream. It's become so normal they don't even report on it anymore. They bust people into cities to stir up stuff. Hmm? Can I say... Uh, Distraction and a betrayal is abounding everywhere. People want to get everybody's minds off of truth. They're distracting and they're betraying and backstabbing people. I've never seen anything like it in my life. I listened to uh, uh, President Trump's speech the other day, and even he, and he made this statement, he said, you know what I think about Joe Biden? He said, but I feel sorry for Joe Biden. They stole the presidency from him. Nobody has yet to explain to me how in the world that she can have the nomination when there's not been one vote cast for it. You know why? Because the same one that was behind Biden is behind her. There is a shadow government that is running this world. Because the same talking points that are going on in America are going on in Britain going on in France, going on in the Netherlands, going on all over the world, the same exact talking points. See, a lot of times while we're mowing our grass and working our jobs and trying to get through life, these governments will meet on certain secret locations. They've filmed sometimes as many as 37 private jets, some of the most powerful people in the world, they say, and they go and they make up what's going to go on. And then it gets enacted. That woman can't even that woman can't even carry on a conversation without a, acting like a hyena. How in the world is she supposed to run a country like America? Amen. Uh, all she is is a puppet on strings. Sure. So how do you know that, preacher? Because they won't let her speak openly. Right. People figure out how dumb that woman really is. Yeah. Right. Really, there's got to be somebody better in America than what, what's running, huh? <laughs> Brother Ray, I'm voting for you. Uh, can I say that democracy is being overthrown? Not only here in America, across the world. When they can stand up and say, oh, no, we're not going to give the results of election for days. What they're saying is we're going to find a way to cheat. When they say that illegals can vote legally in America... Hold on. When they say the Constitution does not matter, by the way, what they did to Joe Biden is unconstitutional. They're making it up as they go. But again, where's the backlash? Hmm? Can I say demonic influence is more evident today than ever? Man, you look at people and they're just evil. Can I say every one of these mass shooters go in places and shoot a lot of people up and kill people? The media doesn't bring it out, but every one of them is mentally unstable. 
You know why they're mentally unstable? Because they're full of the devil. Hmm? We see everywhere we go the spirit of demonism. Can I say there's a disregard for the Lord like never before? Amen. It's a mockery that every election season these absolute whoremongers and thieves and wicked people in Washington, D.C. start going around saying, God bless America. God bless you. I believe in God. Well, they do believe in a God. They don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. When's the last time you heard one of them say, I believe in Jesus? Hmm? John said, try the spirits whether they're of God. Hmm? What can I say? You can go outside and find your palm tree, or no, that was where I was this week. You can go outside and find you a, a, a pine tree and make that your God. Mm -hmm. Amen. That pine tree won't save you from your sins. Amen. Right. Listen, the havoc that we're facing ought to be comforting. Right now, every country in the world, and even many Americans, are starting to line themselves against Israel. They are blaming Israel getting attacked last October on Israel. They are funding Israel's enemies. When was the last time you heard anybody talk about the American citizens that are being held hostage by Hamas? Yet our government tried two weeks ago to make a deal to release two of the people that was behind the 911 catastrophe. They's going to release them from Gitmo. Why? So they can go back and harm more Americans. Can I say, Iran was broke. Now Iran's rich. Because our government keeps funding them. It's crazy. We got the so-called war in Ukraine that we've never seen any footage from. We got battleships sitting down in Cuba that are from Russia or submarines. We got stuff going on all over this world. I'm telling you, this world's about to the brink of World War III. That ought to comfort us. You know the Bible says all nations are going to turn against Israel? That ought to comfort us. Amen. Wherefore, comfort, comfort one another with these world, words. What is he saying? We're about out of here. Right. Huh? That ought to comfort us. Uh, uh, listen, uh, 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 the uh, uh, governments have enacted con uh, control over their citizens all over the world. Did you hear what happened in Great Britain last week? They announced that they will now control what you can post or not post on Facebook. They started arresting their citizens for posting negative things about the government. Freedom of speech was taken away. By the way, the last election season, they took away freedom of speech here in America. Facebook, Twitter, all of them. You couldn't post what uh, you wanted to post. They'd delete it. Matter of fact, I got put in YouTube jail here a few weeks ago preaching myself. Huh? <laughs> uh, why are they concerned about what we say? They don't want truth getting out. Right. Good. Yeah. Hmm? They're arresting people. I saw where an illegal, a Muslim raped a 13-year-old girl in Britain, and he was out of, of, of prison the next day. They arrested a man for posting something on Facebook about the government, and he got 20 years. Can I say there are people in jail from the January 6th made-up insurrection that have never been granted a trial, even though our Constitution gives us a right to a speedy trial. They've never been tried. They're sitting in jail, uh, 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 and they'll be there until somebody shows them kindness and lets them out. Even Kate Middleton. She's the wife of one of the princes over in England was out, in, in, uh, out in amongst the public this, we this last week. She had one of them towel head things on. France has already turned over to Islam, and now Great Britain is. When the royal family is ordaining it, it's over. Can I say in the last 15 years in the nation of France, over a thousand mosques have been built. 
and only one church has been built of Christian flavor. I'm telling you, they're taking over. They're going to take over America. Well, I don't know about you. I was walking around Florence last week and didn't think I was in America anymore. Huh? If you're going to Burlington Coat Factory, you better have an AK-47 on you. I'm not kidding you. I don't know where them people are coming from. Huh? When you don't feel safe in your own neighborhood, something's wrong. Yeah. Hmm? But the governments are taking over. Havoc is reigning. Uh, listen, uh, uh, last week, NASDAQ on Monday had its worst loss in 53 years. Hmm? How many of you checked your 401k Monday? Hmm? You lost a little bit of money. 53 years. Just at some of the things that the politicians are saying. Can I help you with something? It is already on the books. They're going to do away with the Trump tax break, which uh, uh, you think inflation's bad now. Wait till that tax break's gone. Uh, everybody's going to be putting in for overtime. Uh, when that happens, you know what is next to kick in? Evidently, you don't. Is anybody reading this place? Biden has a capitals gains tax that is about ready to take, uh, take shape, and it's a capitals debt gains tax, Brother Charlie, on your future earnings that you haven't even earned yet. They're going to tax you on something you haven't even earned yet. They're going to associate your 401ks, your retirement, and those things, and they're going to try in Social Security. They're going to assume what you may make in the future and go ahead and tax you for it. Isn't that a blessing? We're already giving billions of dollars to Ukraine, billions of dollars to Hamas, billions of dollars around the world. They're taxing us to death. And friend, uh, stick around. It's going to get worse. And that ought to comfort you. Preacher, why? There's no way in the world America will buy into a one world government till America's broke. Amen. And America's spending billions of dollars every day yeah. that she can't pay back. Yeah. It's only a matter of time that China calls in the loans. Hmm? And my dear friends, when America's broke... America will follow anybody that will lead them to some prosperity. Hmm? You ought to take some exciting comfort in that, huh? We live in a day elections are stolen, civil rights are being taken, law and order is spurned, and again, people are blinded. Huh? Can I just share this? Because some of you are bored to death anyway. I saw this. Did you see this picture? They showed Kamala at the airport and tens of thousands of people. Did you see the, how it was doctored? I saw the reflection in the plane. The reflection in the plane, there's nobody standing there. They doctored it in. They AI'd it in. They got somebody smart like Fred to put all these people, they painted people there that weren't there. And people believe it. Listen, the woman can't carry on a conversation. Who's going to go hear that? Just trying to tell you, seeing isn't believing. We ought to be comforted by the havoc of what we're facing. You know from 2 Timothy 3, this know also in the last days perilous times shall come. And he names a bunch of things that's already going on. We ought to take comfort, huh? In Matthew 24, we find in verse number 7, uh, uh, For nations shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, shall be famines, pestilence, earthquakes, and divers places. That's going on. Uh, 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 verse number 10, Many shall be offended, shall betray one another, shall hate one another. Can I say, during COVID, neighbors were turning in neighbors uh, who weren't wearing a mask. Uh, oh, I saw somebody not wearing a mask, huh? Uh, we're living in a day and age where people are, are just blinded. Uh, it said, false prophets shall rise and deceive many. Uh, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Uh, uh, Matthew 24, 37, but as in the days of Noah were, uh, so shall also uh, the coming of the Son of Man be. What happened in the days of Noah? Uh, uh, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth uh, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord 
Lord uh, that he made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. Uh, you think God's pleased with what's going on in this world? You think God's pleased with all the uh, uh, the transgendered mess and everything else that's going on? You think God's pleased with all the sin going on in this world? No, it grieves him. We ought to take comfort in the fact he's coming back, huh? Amen. Can I say not only that, we ought to take comfort in these words because of the hero who is coming. Huh? He's not sending an angel after us. He's coming after us, huh? Matthew 24, 30, uh, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, uh, and then shall the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Uh, I know that's talking about his second coming, but he's coming. Uh, Titus 2, 13, looking for that blessed hope and that glorious appearing of the great God and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, he's coming. Our hero's coming for you and I. I don't know about you, but I'm looking for Jesus. First John chapter 3 says, Every man that hath his hope in, his hell, in himself purifieth himself even as he is pure. Huh? Are you looking for him? We don't know what we shall be, but we know that when he comes, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Huh? Amen. Hallelujah. He's coming. He's coming. We ought to take comfort in that. How many of you would love to see Jesus? I mean, I want to see him. I've just heard about him. I've just read about how he suffered for me. I just read about all that he's got prepared for. I just can't wait to see. John said he saw him and his countenance was as brass. I mean, his face shines like the sun. I mean, John said his hair was white as wool. John said he's just beautiful Look, Hey, I can't wait to see. We ought to comfort one another with these words. And I say we ought to comfort one another with the words of the home that awaits us. Hmm? Huh? Neighbor, I don't recognize... USA many of you that are old like me don't recognize it either and just a glimpse of where we're going whets my appetite John said in John, uh, Revelation 21 I saw a new heaven new earth for the first heaven first earth were passed away and there was no more sea let me talk to some germaphobe brother Aaron you're a germaphobe don't laugh at him I'll call you out too he said he saw a new heaven and a new earth. Nobody's ever trod it on this place. Amen. You don't have to go clean it up before you can walk around. Huh? You don't need any of that hand sanitizer or nothing. It's a new heaven and a new earth. Huh? He saw New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. Uh, hey, he, he said that uh, 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 he saw where God would wipe away the tears from their eyes uh, and God would be amongst them and be their God. Uh, he said there'd be no more sickness, no more pain, uh, no more death. Uh, hey, uh, he went on to say it's a celestial city, uh, got streets of gold, walls of jasper, gates of pearl. Uh, hey, had 12 foundation, uh, but he said the beauty beauty of it all is right in the middle of it uh, is the lamb uh, and he's the light of the city uh, hey we ought to comfort one another we're going to a land and we don't have to worry about who our neighbor's going to be uh, I thought about this he said comfort one another with these words we can be comforted by the horror we're going to escape over there in Revelation chapter 20 some of the most sad words in the Bible. Verse 15 said, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Yeah. Friends, only by the grace of God you heard the gospel. Amen. It's only by the grace of God you've heard the truth. Yes. It's only by the grace of God you're not stooped in the clutches of some religion. You know, there's a lot of good religious people but they're going to die and go to the lake of fire. There's a lot of moral people that's going to go to the lake of fire. There's a lot of people that grew up like you grew up that's going to go to the lake of fire. It's only by the grace of God we're not going to see that treacherous place, Amen. the charred regions of the damned. It's only by the grace of God we ought to take comfort we don't deserve to get to go to heaven. We don't deserve to get to see Jesus. We don't deserve to have the blessed hope. But by His grace, we got it. Amen. We ought to take comfort in that. Huh? Oh, we ought not take pride in it. But we ought to take comfort in it. We ought not think ourselves to be something when we're nothing. 
But we ought to take comfort in the fact this thing's about over. I don't know about you. I'm about ready for the trumpet. I've seen all I need to see. It's time to go. Huh? Now let me ask you this question. Are you ready for the trumpet? Friend, I really can't promise you we'll have church tonight. Trumpet could sound this afternoon. If we have church tonight, trumpet could sound tonight. You may never see another tomorrow. Hey, the trumpet may not sound tomorrow, but you may be in a fatal wreck today. Are you ready to meet the Lord? You could meet him a whole lot quicker than you think you're going to meet him. Are you ready? Maybe here today and you've never been born again. Wouldn't you like to be born again? Look around this world. It's a mess. We're going to a world that's wonderful. Huh? Say, preacher, I I think I would. I'm tired of this old world. I'm tired of my sin. I'd love to get saved. In a moment, we're going to have an invitation. You come. We'll get somebody to take a Bible, show you how to be saved. You can be saved today. But dear child of God, we're to be a peculiar people. You know how to be peculiar in this world? Just be happy, number one. Just walk around looking up. Amen. People will start, what's he looking at? What are you looking at? I'm looking for him. Yeah. Who? The Lord. He's coming. You ready to meet him? Huh? If we walk around without our heads down and keep our heads up, we'd be a peculiar people. Huh? Say, so how can I be peculiar? Be comforted by the fact he's coming. You ready to meet him? He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. One of these days I'm going to preach my last message. He's coming. One of these days you're going to be in your last church service. He's coming. Better take advantage. This might be your last church service. If you go to heaven from this church service, how are you going to go? Hmm? You ought to go ready. God help yeah. us to be ready. Because he's coming. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, you come. Miss Tina, you come. Get a song for us. Y'all leave here comforted by the fact you know you're ready to go. If the thought of his coming gives you any distress whatsoever, you ought to come get that thing settled. Maybe this morning you need to come and thank him that you're ready to go. Maybe you need to come thank him what he done for you. Maybe this morning, you just need to come and tell him you love him. I don't know. But certainly, if you're here today and don't know the Lord, why don't you come? We'd love to introduce you to him. Let's all pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for these that have already come. Speak to hearts now. Comfort your people. We'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.